Hey guys, Traps here, and today we're taking a look at the Asus CX5 2-in-1 Chromebook. More specifically, the C536EA that I picked up from Best Buy last week. This normally retails for about $569, but I grabbed it for $399 during one of their many sales. Let's take a look at some specs. This has a large 15.6 inch screen at 1920 by 1080 there's an 11th gen Intel i3 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and features a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. The Tiger Lake i3 benchmarks even faster than a 10th gen i5 for most simple tasks. For more complicated tasks, the i5's core may edge it out, but for most Chromebook users, this 11th gen i3 will be more than capable of whatever you need. It's heavy, coming in at 4.3 pounds, but I guess that's to be expected with this massive 15.6 inch screen. It comes in at 0 0.73 inches thick, 9.48 inches deep, and 14.08 inches wide. It's big, but with that size comes some nice features that you don't see in your average Chromebook, including a full-size HDMI port and even a number pad. We'll hit on those more in a bit. In researching these Chromebooks, I was a bit skeptical of the large amount of plastic, especially in the chassis here, and that combined with the size of the device had me a little worried about stiffness and rigidity. I'm happy to say this Asus really delivers. This thing is nice and stiff, and it seems really sturdy, has really nice seams. And we'll hit on more of the quality on some of the other aspects of the device when we get later into the review. Oh, and I guess I'll add that this is also included in the box. This is your standard 45 watt charging cable. It's a bit shorter than the cables that are included in a normal Chromebook, but it's just this end and this end. There's no middle brick on it, so it's pretty convenient. As with most Chromebooks, this comes with a 720p webcam, and it's nothing special, but it gets the job done. There's no fingerprint sensor, and there's no included stylus, though it does support USI pens. Going down the right side, we see a USB Type-C port, the coveted full-size HDMI, and an SD card slot. On the left is a second Type-C port, the USB-A port, and a headphone jack. Being this is a 2-in-1 device, we also have the volume rocker and a power button. Okay, so let's open this thing. First off, I love the colors here. My work laptop has a silver shell with the all black interior, but this white shell with the all black interior takes it to a new level. So shutting it again, let's open that. Okay, yeah, so there's no magnet to hold it shut, but it still stays shut just fine. The hinges are a bit stiffer, which helps it stay shut, but they also sort of snap into that shut position when you're close enough. It stays closed just fine. The slight chamfer on the front of this also makes the lid stick out a bit more, which makes it for some really easy opening. But, because it's a chamfer and it's nice and smooth there, it's not something that's going to get caught on something and open accidentally. Because of the stiffer hinges though, it certainly doesn't have a one finger lift like we'd see on many of the MacBooks. It is still smooth, it's just a bit stiffer. I do want to bring up this ergo lift. You can see the back here getting propped up when I open it. In theory, this is to help with ergonomics, but I honestly never notice it on any of the devices that I use. My main concern is with the protective nubs that they add. These keep the screen from pressing into the table, but they also stick out a decent amount. I can't help but be concerned that these will break off if you frequently transport it in bags. I will note that someone on Reddit mentioned that you can super glue them back on, and apparently it holds pretty well. But to be honest, for a $600 laptop, I'd hope to avoid something like that. And hey, maybe this won't even be an issue. Anyways, let's flip this open here. We've got tent mode. It's very stable here and works just as you'd expect. Flipping it into tablet mode is interesting. Now, I can't see too many people doing this, but it's worth taking a look. So, yeah, this thing is a monster. At 4.3 pounds and 15.6 inches, it's just not something you're reasonably going to use in tablet mode. And as I mentioned earlier, there's no magnet holding the lid shut in clamshell mode, and because of that, there's no magnet holding it shut in tablet mode. But just like in clamshell mode, these hinges somewhat snap it shut so that it doesn't bounce around. I don't suspect many are going to want to use it in tablet mode, but it's nice to see that it stays relatively secure when in use. So let's take a look at the screen. It's 1920 by 1080, so a standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and it peaks at 250 nits of brightness. Being 1080p at 15.6 inches means it's not exactly the most pixel dense screen out there, but it's not something that I would personally notice. I see no difference in the resolution between this or even the Acer Spin 713, which has a slightly over 2K resolution. The brightness, on the other hand, is something that I do notice. 250 nits just isn't ideal for a laptop, and I'd love to see something 300 to 350 nits. Don't get me wrong, it's perfectly fine for most environments that I'm going to use it in. Hell, I even have the brightness turned down slightly most of the time. I could easily use this as my daily laptop without really thinking about the brightness. But you struggle if you're in a bright room, or if you're going to try using it outside. 
I'm someone who doesn't typically like a super high brightness, so while this does work for me and I'm perfectly fine with it, it may not be ideal for everyone. So there's the visuals, but what about the audio? Well, for audio, we've got a pair of mics. As you'd expect, nothing special here. Good enough for OK Google or video calls, but you're not going to be using these for high quality audio. For the audio output, we've got undermounted speakers on either side. These are directly on the bottom, but also on the underside chamfer. I'm not an audiophile, I'm not going to give a detailed breakdown of the audio on this. I'll just say this. They sound just fine to me and are more than acceptable. If you want great sound, don't use built-in speakers. And that goes for basically any laptop. I will note that I tried using these in various configurations and could hear them just fine in every test, even when on my lap with my legs covering up the speakers. In addition, when in tent mode, the speakers on the chamfered section actually point out around the screen, and it possibly makes for a better experience than most other devices. I don't know, maybe it doesn't do anything, but it looks like maybe it could. Let's move on now to the input devices. We're going to start with the touchscreen. I don't really have much to say here, I find it to work really well. Granted, my only real experience with touchscreens from laptops is my old Toshiba T900 from college, and that thing was terrible. I haven't used a pen with this device, but for finger input and navigating around, I'm having no issues. Next, we have the keyboard. The first thing you'll notice is the numpad. Asus took advantage of this massive screen and opted to add this pad onto the side. It's rare that I'll want to use a numpad, but when I do, it's really nice to have. The other thing this adds, though, is the delete key, and I wish this was standard on more Chromebooks, as I do find myself wanting it pretty regularly. Beyond that, the keyboard actually feels really good. The keys feel great, and the texture on the platform is fantastic. It does feel a bit awkward with the main keyboard being slightly shifted to the left, especially when using it on my lap, but then again that's something that I probably just need to get used to. The last thing to discuss is the trackpad, and this, well, this is a big no-go for me. It feels fantastic. However, once I started using it, I couldn't get over some of the issues with the accuracy. In fact, I handed it to my wife when she got home, and the accuracy of the trackpad was the first thing that she mentioned to me. I tried messing with acceleration sensitivity, but nothing seemed to work. From what I can tell, it's due to two things. One, I think the acceleration is having some issues where it keeps changing mid-swipe. Perhaps it's picking up on some roll of my finger if my finger's not moving perfectly smoothly across it. And number two is angle snapping, where it tries to predict if you're going perfectly left or right. I'm used to higher-end Windows laptop or my wife's MacBook, which all have very nice trackpads, so I guess I'm a bit spoiled by that. But also, almost all Chromebooks that I've tried have been somewhat disappointing in regards to accuracy of the trackpad. Some have been okay, but this Asus is scoring pretty low for me. Another negative aspect, for me at least, is the size of the trackpad. It's nice and wide, but unfortunately it's a bit short. Depending on how you hold the trackpad, it may be fine, but if you're someone like me who likes to navigate with your pointer finger at the top and using your thumb at the bottom for clicking, this just feels a little too tight. It doesn't stop there though, the clicking mechanism is also poorly done. If you use tap to click, there's no issue, but as someone who uses the physical click at the bottom of the pad, I'm having some serious issues. As with most units that I've seen people review, the trackpad is floating slightly. Basically, the hinge isn't set right, so the bottom of the trackpad springs up higher than it should. Because of this, when you click down, you almost have two levels of click. If you're not thinking about it, you'll click down halfway to where it probably should have been to begin with, and you think that you've clicked. But in reality, you need to press it even further. It should be a fairly simple fix if you just open up the device and adjust the hinge, but the fact that so many reviews have had this issue sort of speaks to poor quality control. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of the trackpad. It feels good, but functionally it's terrible. At least on the unit I bought it is. Okay, so there's just a few things left to hit on. Let's talk battery. I had pretty low expectations going in because of how bad the battery is on all of the other laptops that I'm used to, so I was pleasantly surprised with this one. It's advertised to get about 10 hours of battery life, and I totally believe it. It also charges nice and quickly, and the ability to charge from either side of the device with either of the USB-C ports is fantastic. I'm really liking that. The fan isn't great, but it's also not a deal breaker. In my light use, I certainly heard it kick on a few times. That said, when it was on, I noticed it more of a, oh yeah, hey, the fan is on. It's not super loud. So yeah, while it's not ideal that it kicks on pretty regularly, it's not really that noticeable. Well, now that I've gone through all of that, what are my final conclusions? Quite simply, this, this thing, it, it's just not for me. I personally plan to use my Chromebook when it's on my lap, or on the couch, or when I'm on vacation. I have a work laptop, I have a gaming PC, and I can use those for most of my tasks. Because of that, this thing is just, it's big. It's bigger than what I need. 
In addition, the off-center keyboard and the trackpad just make it somewhat awkward to use. I can totally see this being a solid choice for someone who's using it at a desk, especially if you have an external mouse and keyboard, but it's just not for me. At $399, which I've seen this sale come up quite a bit, I do feel that it's a really good deal. I don't think I can recommend it at full price, but I do really feel that it's a nice machine. You'll probably need to open it up and adjust the trackpad hinges, and you're going to have to adjust to having the keyboard and trackpad off-center. But outside of that, I feel this is a really solid machine that I could comfortably recommend. Now I've made videos for a while, but this is my first review. Hey, it's even the first video going out on this new channel, so please, if you have any feedback, let me know and I'll try and improve things in the future. Next, I plan to discuss the HP X360 and the Acer Spin 713. If you're interested in those reviews, or if you want to see some of the other projects that I have going on, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will catch you next time.